as a recap for the deflection based on the center where a deflectometer would give you the measurement versus the crossheads. So the deflectometer gives you these measurements with the deflection there being del C and the crosshead, if you don't have a deflectometer, they'll give you the results at these anvils right here, and that's going to be del M, I call it, for del measured, because in our case, we're not using a deflectometer. So, using center deflection, del C, del C equals PA over 24 EI, 3L squared minus 4A. Now I'm just rewriting the equations from um, the past two videos that I've made. In the case of the central, the measured strain from the cross head, so this is then del M is equal to PA over 6EI, 3ALA squared. So you can see it's somewhat different. And then from the force deflection, we can do a linear regression of the linear part, and you get that the bending stiffness is del F del C. And remembering that F equals 2P, we can calculate the bending stiffness, the structural bending stiffness, that's K, okay, 48, again the derivations are in the past slides, so look at the other videos to get those, and for this case, same thing. But this is going to be a different K because we're using the deflection at the cross set or the anvils, not the center deflection. So this number is not going to be equal to the one from the center deflection. When we substitute in del M, we get an effective EI. Again, it's for dependent on how we um, set up the test. Okay, so those are similar equations, but somewhat different. Um, now again, we are uh, using we are using this ASTM bending standard. I want you to note here that um, different variable names. So when you look at that equation, there are there are going to be different variable names. Uh, for example, I believe A equals H in the standard, and what we're calling S here is equal to A in the standard. So that's a little confusing, but depending on what book you use, um, you'll use different terminology and different uh, variable names. So we can just divide by I and we can get our modulus. And same thing for here. Now remember, this is effective. This is this is not equal to actual material modulus because it is not referencing the 
reflection at the center so that the equations are correct, but they're not they're not accurate for getting that. Uh, and then the strain, the maximum strain, is so this is how the machine, if you said go up to four percent strain, it'll calculate C, where C equals half of the thickness and del C is the center of displacement, which again, the machine thinks that's what we're doing. Um, in a deflectometer, it is what you get, but in a, a cross-head displacement method, it's not what you get. You know what the length is and you know where uh, the anvils are. For the case of uh, this measure displacement, we get slightly different equation. And again, not equal, this is an effective one, not equal to the true value. So this number is going to be different. Um, and if your machine is assuming that you got your deflectometer uh, reading, but you're actually using cross-head, you'll have to compensate for that. So the next slide I'm going to show you for a specific case, a span ratio that we use in our experiment, um, what that looks like. So in the special case that A equals L over 4, um, in other words, the span ratio of L, the dimension, and X, the distance between the loading anvils, L over S equals 2, then you'll, and then A, then you have two A's there, then your A is equal to L over 4, and we can plug that into those equations. For that case, del C is going to equal 11 384ths. And if you look back at the, again, the, the last video, you'll see these calculations. Okay, so that's the, um, the displacement in the center given a load P with uh, the geometric factors of L. E and the material property E and the moment of inertia of the cross section of I. And remembering that um, the force you're going to measure is uh, F and P equals half of F, and you get dividing it by 2. Okay? And in the case of In the case of the measured one, you get EL cubed over 48 EI, which is actually the same you get for um, three-point bending, and dividing by two for the measured FL squared over 96 EI. So why do I do this? Well, I can get, um, I can now compare the two of them, and you can see that for this case, del C over del M equals 1.375. If you get a displacement dm, you can calculate what dc would be by multiplying times 1.375, and you can uh, reconstruct what the center displacement should have been, uh, or at least approximate it uh, theoretically. So what's the modulus look like? K again is a measured from the slope of the low displacement um, and uh, and the rest are geometric parameters. And in the case when we're looking in the middle, E again effective equals eleven. I'm sorry. The effective equals K times L cubed over 96i. Again, if we take the ratio of those two, E over E effective, we get 1.375. Okay, you'll see the theme here is that if 
the machine is uh, using to calculate the modulus, thinking it's getting deflectometer strain, it's going to overestimate what the Young's modulus is by uh, 1.375. So you have to take the number you get out of the machine and divide by 1.375. 1 and last but not least, This is the center displacement. That's the strain. So if, if you set this in the, in the machine, uh, you'll get a control strain. And the fiber strain, again, effective is 12C. Again, DM equals cross and measure. And you'll see that active equals 1.375. So again, out of the machine, if the machine gives you a stress strain plot, because it automatically calculates for you, and you put in the right load span and everything, but you're using the cross-head displacement, you have to multiply your strain that comes out of the machine uh, in the data, raw data file by 1.375, and you'll get what the strain is actually in uh, the material, the maximum strain.